Welcome everyone, this is tutorial 1 of our tutorial series that will introduce you to the basics of R. Here are the instructions for this tutorial, as well as the short Google quiz for your own self-assessment. And this quiz should be done as you move along the tutorial, and it should be very clear when you should be answering which question. And these are the learning objectives for this tutorial. You can learn them or you can read them at your own pace, but in a nutshell, we will be going over a few very basic functions and tools that R has to offer. Before we start any projects in R, we need to make sure that everything is set up first. So here are some pointers on how you should set up for your R session. First of all is your working directory. And this is the directory or the folder that your R session is directly linked to. By default, this is the folder that your current R file is saved in. So to see what your current working directory is, we use this function right here, get wd. And if you run this function, the output is the folder that R will be taking files from, as well as saving files too, if you choose to import or export any files using R. Okay, now, if you want to change your working directory, let's say you have a file that exists in another folder and you want to pull that file to your R session. To do that, we need to change our working directory and we need to use this function right here, setwd. And different from getwd, setwd has what we call arguments. And this thing is an argument right here. So for set wd, the only argument that it requires is the direct pathway of the folder that you want your working directory to be. Note how this pathway is also in quotation marks. And in Kaggle, this is where you copy the pathway, right here, on the right. But if you're using the desktop art studio, then you need to go into folders or finder to find the pathway. Now, after changing the working directory, you can check what files are in the directory by using this function right here, the IR or dir. And if by any chance you want to revert back to your original folder or you want to change your working directory back to your original one, it's a bit more complicated, but it's still possible. For this particular notebook, I need to run this code chunk, so set wd quotation marks with two periods inside, tells us that we need to move back one folder level. So doing this three times means that we're moving back three folders. And the reason why this notebook needs to move back three folders is because this working directory that we are currently in is this one. And it is also in this folder, the input folder. And the input folder is in a larger folder named Kaggle. So that's two levels of folders already. But that Kaggle folder is also housed in an even larger folder that also has our input folder. So that's three levels of folders. And because output is our original working directory, to move back to this folder, we need to go back to the input, then go back out into the Kaggle folder, then back out to the larger folder where you can only see the slash, and then after that we can go back to our original output folder. It's like if we're in a maze and we're trying to retrace our steps to where we were originally. So we need to step back first and then find our way out or find our way back to the original way. Okay. And then also along the whole series of tutorials, you'll also see these functions debunked sections right here. And these sorry, and these sections aim to give you a bit more insight to the different important functions that we'll go through in each tutorial. Okay, 
So keep an eye out for that. There are a few in this tutorial um, and in future tutorials you can also see these same sections. And then the next thing we're going to go through is installing and attaching packages. So R has many functions, and these functions are housed in different packages. And to use specific functions, we need to install the appropriate packages first. And then we attach the packages into our R session, and then we can use the functions. If we don't do this, if we don't install or attach our packages, R won't be able to recognize the function that we want to use and then we won't be able to use those functions. So for example, if I want to use the function ggplot, and we'll go over ggplot um, in another tutorial. Don't worry about that too much for now. This is just going to be our very simple example for now. But if I want to use this function ggplot, I first need to install the whole package that the function is in. So I need to run this code, install.packages, and then the package name in quotation mark. And then after that, I need to attach it using library. And now I can use ggplot. You can try running ggplot before installing and attaching the package to see if it works. It will not work. <laughs> so the good thing about this whole attaching and installing packages is that we only need to install the packages once. Unless we delete it, then we need to install it again. But if we already installed it and it's already in our hard drive, then we only need to install it once. But every time, sorry, but every time you start a new R session, you need to rerun this library code right here to basically reattach the package and to remind R that we are using this package or to confirm that we're using this package and not another package. Okay, now that we have everything set up, let's try to explore R a little bit more. So in this section, you'll learn how you can use R as a calculator. And this is where arithmetic um, operators come in. So here are a few arithmetic operators that can be used in R and their description. Pause this video and check them out. And after you're familiar with that, feel free to do the try it yourself section and also the quiz section. Just translate these numbers to correct our um, arithmetic operators in a code chunk and see what the outputs are. So hopefully by now, you should have the tutorial copied so that you'll be able to edit it. Otherwise, you can also translate this whole try it yourself section right here into an R Studio session um, and try to solve the try it yourself sections. Aside arithmetic operators, we can also use logical operators in R. So, this is where our output can only be true or false. So for example, if I tell R that A is larger than, sorry, if we tell R that A, the variable, is 5 larger than 4, R will now store this information in the variable A. And since it is true that 5 is larger than 4, the value that A retains is just true. And we can run this code to confirm that that is the um, information that A retains. Here's another example. If B is assigned a value of 8, then this will be false, right? Because this operator translates to not equal to, and B cannot be both equal to 8 and not equal to 8. So this yields false. And something I want to highlight is that in R, equal um, or equal to is signified by two equal signs like this. So if we scroll up to the table, it should be consistent. So here you see two equal signs instead of just one. 
When we use one equal sign, it has another meaning. And most of the time, the equal sign has the same meaning as this symbol right here um, that we use to assign values to variables. So, just something that I want to note. 